The following satellite transmission, copyrighted by the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, is available for live broadcast in 10 seconds or for taping and rebroadcasting by any AM, FM, shortwave, cable, or video outlet globally. This is a WBN Worldwide Broadcasting Network production. This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance broadcast. My old grandfather back in Kansas was born and brought up near the Quinamo Indian tribe in the Blue Stem Flint Hills of the Meridacene River Valley in the eastern part of that great prairie state. And from those Indian friends, he learned many sayings and proverbs. But there was one which, though troubling in truthfulness, yet contained one lonely lesson about life. The Indians used to say that most of your friends are like your shadow, always right there beside you as long as the sun is shining. But when the dark storm clouds of adversity gather overhead, they soon will vanish and are gone. But the Indians also taught that there is one friend who is always with you, in rain or in shine, in sunlight or storm, and that one friend is the Great Spirit, the Eternal Father, the Everlasting God, who, when all others abandon you, will yet continue to love you with a love which will not let you go. God, the living God, the architect of time and space, the creator of all that is, loves you this very moment. And God has newness of life for you. A traveler in Italy once told of seeing in Florence a triumph of restorative patience and skill. There was a statue there which had been found broken into over 1,000 chips, fragments, and pieces. But a certain dedicated artist with painstaking patience set about the task of replacing all of those shattered particles into their proper places and eventually this broken marble statue was restored and it stands still today in wonderful beauty in an Italian museum. And in precisely the same way, the living God, the God of this universe, who is the supreme artist of all reality, can take the most shattered and besmirched and broken human life, a life which some might cast into the void with the rubbish and disregard and have no value in, yet God can take that life and in the passage of time hold it up in restored moral beauty and righteousness and spirituality. And God is able to do that, and God does that every day. God can restore your broken life, no matter what has happened, if you will give your life to the God who gave you your life in the first place. For with God, all things are possible. Said Jesus, have faith in God. Let this faith become central to your life in thought, word, and deed. Thought is not mature until it passes into action. Opportunity never comes. It's already here, right now. And said the philosopher Goethe, a useless life is but an early death. A useless life is but an early death. Refuse to die the early death of a useless life, a life not committed to some great plan, some great purpose, the very will of God for you. Resolve to make use of your life because God has a plan for this planet and a purpose for your life. Despite the indisputable tragedies, problems, and perplexities of life on this earth, there's one group of scientists saying the world is heading into global warming. Another warns of global freezing. Some say humanity will pollute itself into a greenhouse effect causing year-round suffocating summertime. Others say humankind will bomb itself into a desolate nuclear winter. And yet humanity has other alternatives not only described by these two, nuclear winter or smog-smoldering summer, for there is a third alternative, which is the dawning of a spiritual springtime, a new religious renaissance of spirituality, of truth and beauty and goodness and love, the love of God and the love of humanity. Those were the two great commandments. And if those commandments were kept by only a fraction, only a small percentage of this planet, just every other person or every third or fourth or fifth person, this world would be virtually unrecognizable in its goodness and kindliness. That only is important, which is eternal. 
Give your life to that. Seek above all things the eternal will of the eternal God, and you will begin to live eternal life by eternal values and meanings here and now, today, tonight, this very instant. All things, behold, all things will become as new. Some years ago there passed away a man who was well known and noted in his community and his circle of friends for living a life of extraordinary usefulness and service and goodness to his fellow human beings. And many of his friends were interested in knowing something of the motivation, something of his philosophy and his background which had impelled him in such a life of unselfish pursuit of opportunities for doing good for other human beings. And there was a clue finally discovered when somebody found in one of his pockets of one of his suits a little poem, this poem, crumpled and underlined something which he clearly had carried with him for years, a poem by Carl Knudsen. Listen to this. The clock of life is wound but once, and no man has the power to tell just when the hands will stop, at late or early hour. Now is the only time you own. Give love and toil with a will. Place no faith in tomorrow, for the clock may by then be still. You are living your life somewhere on this earth, no matter where on this planet you're hearing this worldwide broadcast. You are living in the eternal now. God loves you now. God has great plans and purposes for you, not just two weeks or three months or five years from now, but here and now, this very moment. Have the faith to claim these things and rebuke and repudiate fear and worry and anxiety. On one old dilapidated fireplace mantel, there were carved these words over in England. I'm an old man and I've had many troubles but most of them never happened. The worst evil which a person can ever endure, Benjamin Disraeli, the great statesman thought, was the anticipation of calamities that never take place. There were two hikers one time they were resting at the top of a high mountain, and the first man turned to the second climber, and he said, what brings you way up here? Why do you hike up this mountain, clear up to this high elevation? It's a tough climb, a rough climb. It is. The second hiker said, but all my troubles, all my heartaches and problems are down there below in that little valley where I live and where I have my business. He said, when I'm down there in the valley, those problems and difficulties and decisions seem enormous and weigh me down. But he said, every now and then I come up here, and from up here on the mountain, those problems begin to seem pretty small, especially when I see what a little bit of those great big mountains my little tiny valley is faith and prayer and worship give you a new perspective on every aspect of your life. Have faith in God, said Jesus. Those four powerful words, have faith in God. There is a fearless power in faith. The great Justin Martyr was asked by a Roman judge during the Christian persecution when Christians were being put to death right and left for believing in the teachings of Jesus. The Roman judge said to him, Are you a Christian? And Justin Martyr replied, I am. And I suppose you think, said the judge, with a pitying sneer on his face, that after we have whipped you and scourged you and tortured you and then cut off your head, I suppose you think you're going to ascend or rise up into heaven. And Justin Martyr replied, no, I do not suppose it. He said, I don't just think it or imagine it or hope for it. He said, I know it. I know that I shall have eternal life. You too can live your life in fearless faith, a faith which through the centuries has sustained and strengthened and empowered men and women of faith in ways amazing to behold, emblazoned across the pages of history books. If you will utterly give your life to God, you'll discover the assurance, the peace, the power of not just knowing about God, but knowing God as your loving Father and your friend. One woman said, I don't know what's in the future, but I do know that God is in the future, and I know that I am in God, and that's all I need to know. The author, Archibald Brown, told the story of a Scotchman who stood up in a public meeting 
and bore witness that he was saved, that he had eternal life, that he was going to heaven, and he knew it. An unbeliever, a skeptic, a doubter stood up and said, but how do you know that you're saved? And the old Scotchman replied, well, sir, I was there when it happened. That's how I know it. May you come to such an unshakable experience of God, such a profound faith, such a courageous commitment to the will and wisdom of God that you live fearlessly. Remember, what you will be tomorrow, you are becoming today. The decisions you reach this very moment, the choices you make now as you're listening to this worldwide broadcast, what you decide now is going to determine what you are tomorrow and next week, next month, and next year. Dare to commit your life to God and live fearless of life, for God's presence is there with you closer than heartbeat, the pulse beat, and the very breath in your lungs. The poet Paul Buller wrote, Cast away fear, be of good cheer, for God is here, God is here. Know that in faith. God is here, right here, right now, this very moment. And you can live fearlessly. You can live with a new faith, a new joy, a new peace and power and purpose in your life. The late Dr. W. Russell Boy, who was a professor at Union Theological Seminary in New York, wrote this story about another professor, a friend of his named Dr. Wilbur Crosby Bell, who taught at the University of Virginia. Dr. Bell was dying. He had a sudden illness come upon him, and in only a few hours he was lying on his deathbed. But he sent this message to be read to his students at the university in class the next day. And these were the words that he wrote. He said, Tell my pupils that I have grown surer about God every year of my life and that I've never been so sure as I am right now. I'm so glad to find that I haven't the least shadow of shrinking or uncertainty. I've always thought so, and now that I'm right up against it, I know so. Life owes me nothing. I've had work that I've loved. I've lived in a beautiful place among good friends. I've had love in its highest form, and I've got it forever. I can see now that death is just the smallest thing, just an accident, but it means nothing. There is no real break no real interruption and life all that really counts in life just goes right on and with those words he died you too can live in a faith like that you can count on God you can rely on God you can be certain about God and in God you can live and move and have your being fearless of life and fearless of death for all eternity it is yours this moment by the faith to claim it. Write to us, will you, at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute. We want to hear from you wherever you're listening on this world, to this great global broadcast, to the Spiritual Renaissance broadcast, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644. That's Box 3080, 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, for free literature. Just write in, tell us what your problem is or what you're thinking about, what you're dealing with. We want to hear from you and correspond with you. Write to Box 3080, Oakhurst, California. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell that mailing address, Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day. <laughs>